You can actually give it a dash P to print directly the screen and E to execute JavaScript that you give it. So I could do something like fs.stat sync, and then I could say, um, what is it? File.txt. So you could do this if you wanted to run it, and then it stats that file. The cool thing here is instead of hard coding the screen or the string, we could say process.argv1. This would be the first argument that we give it. So if we go over here and give it an argument, file.txt, we could stat that file. We could give it the name of the directory that we're currently in because you can stat directories too. Directories are files just like regular files are. Slight differences, of course, they're not exactly like regular files, but you can stat them. They also have an inode which has metadata about it, which is pretty neat. And then if you didn't like that output, you could do something like json.stringify. Oh man, am I gonna leave this in the video? I have no idea, this seems like a little bit excessive. So now we have a stringified version, and then we can pipe that to JQ, and now we have the stat information as JSON, which is pretty neat. So we can wrap all this in an alias, let's call this nstat for node stat, put this in single quotes, get rid of the argument, close that single quote here. I'm probably gonna put this at the end of the video. So now if we call nstat, we can give it file.txt here, and now we have this nice little stat function that uses node that gives us JSON back, and you can get the exact same information. Um, 